How you doing? This, oh, this is my specialized crux. That's right. I bought this bike with my own hard earned money earlier this year. And since then, it's become my favorite bike of the year. It's the one I ride more than any others. And if my house were burned down, God forbid, this is probably a bike I would rush in and save above all others. So I thought I'd better explain why I like the bike so much, how I use it as a road, gravel and cross bike with three different sets of wheels and tires for the ultimate N plus one killer, possibly. The jury is out. Point out some niggles and gripes because sadly it's not quite perfect, but it's very, very close indeed and try to justify my purchase, I guess. So uh, let's dive in. Now, the one regret I do have about buying a specialized Crux is not buying it sooner. I reviewed it when it launched back in 2021 and it blew me away. I was so impressed with the changes they made to the Crux. The best changes since it launched back in 2012 with a super lightweight 725 gram frame, spaced for 47 mil wide tires and a modified geometry. And you might think I bought the wrong bike and that the Diverge might be a better platform and you may be right in some ways, but I like the simplicity of the Crux, the low weight, the external cable routing, seat clamp and bottom brackets. And that all spoke to me on a level beyond wanting all the latest improvements and latest gizmos and gadgets and so on. As a bike, I could do cross in the winter, it could do gravel in the summer, and do a bit of road as well. So over the last 10 months, I've been riding this bike a lot. I've used it with three different sets of wheels and tires, cross tires, gravel tires, and even road tires to see whether this Crux can be an N plus one killer. Three bikes in one. Let's start with riding the Crux as it was born to do back in 2012. And that is a cyclocross race bike. So over the last few months, I've immersed myself on and off back into the world of cross racing and I've had so much fun. It really is the best form of cycle racing there is. It's fun, it's hard work, a good workout. The races are short, intense, only last an hour so you're over and done with very quickly and the competition, the camaraderie is just fantastic. So definitely highly recommended and this bike is probably the best cross bike I've ever ridden in my many years of bike testing. So I have fitted some really skinny looking UCI Legal 33 mil wide tires, a Futuria Terreno mud, which I highly recommend. The grip these give in the corners when you really back the bike over, it's just phenomenal. So much grip, so much traction, just incredible. And they're fitted to a pair of Windspace Hyper wheels which I know are a bit overkill for cross racing, but do look damn cool, it has to be said. And the stiffness is great for handling precision. That super low weight makes it really nimble and agile and precise around a twisting, fast turning course. The geometry is fantastic as well. Nice high bottom bracket for pedal clearance through the corner to so keep pedaling and use the uh, aggressive tires to keep traction. And the low weight also means when it's getting really muddy towards the end of an hour long race, the bike is still lightweight as well. And all that clearance around the tires compared to the old models means there's less chance for mud to clog on the frame. And I've done races in some very bad conditions and the mud clogging hasn't really been an issue. And for cross racing, which really hammers the bike in some truly awful conditions, the bike is easy to maintain and service. The headset bearings, for example, can be extracted with no issues at all, thanks to the external cable routing. And the same with the bottom bracket, which is now threaded, and a regular seat post, and the security of an external seat clamp, which I really like. The real reason I bought the bike, which may surprise you or shock you, is as a gravel bike, which might not make sense when they had the diverged gravel platform in their range. But with the changes special I've made to the bike, with the bigger tire clearance and the geometry, it definitely moved it a step away from just a pure cross bike and now a gravel bike as well. And with these probably 45 mil wide tires fitted and a short stem and wide fled handlebar, it performed extremely well as a gravel bike. The geometry is definitely more road bias than something slack and long 
like a Merida Silex or a BMC Urs or a 51 Assassin, but it does compare well to a Canyon Grail or something of that ilk. And I've ridden it on all my local trails and I even took it to California back in the spring and rode some of the amazing gravel tracks and mountain bike paths around Marin County. And even, would you believe it, by total accident, rode down the famous and iconic Repack mountain bike trail, which is where mountain biking was born back in the 70s. And it handled it all just fine. And it's definitely a bike that surprised me in just how adept it is at doing gravel riding compared to pure gravel bikes like your company's own Diverge. Yes, the comfort isn't as good as that Diverge platform, whether the normal one or the STR, but it's pretty good. And with a suspension stem and seat post, as I have trialed this year, comfort can be boosted very easily. And with space with 45 mm wide tyres, you can go wider as well if you want, get loads of comfort from a low pressure, big volume tyre. So the Crux can do gravel, it does it very well and definitely met my expectations and probably surpassed them if I'm honest with you. And can the Crux really be a road bike as well? Surely not. Well, to find out, I put these tyres on. A Renhurst Barlow Pass 38mm wide tyre, which is far too wide for most road bikes, with the exception of the new Giant Defy, Trek de Marnie and Special Roubaix, but generally too wide for most road bikes. But on this bike, we have loads of clearance between the tyre and the frame and fork. So they fit no problems at all. But how does the bike ride? Very well, as it turns out. The tyres give a lovely smooth, cushiony ride over rough road surfaces, lovely and supple as well. Loads of grip at low pressures. And I'm talking about 40 PSI front and rear with these wide tyres. And the way the bike rides is just fantastic. The geometry gives a sprightly manner through the corners, nice long wheelbase for stability down the descent and generally behaves very well. There are a few differences, like the bottom bracket is taller than an endurance road bike, but the way it rides on the road is just exceptional. And then the low weight helps it climb very well indeed too. And then the other benefit of this bike is the gearing. I have a 1044 in the back with a 42 tooth chainring, which means that 42, 44 gearing on the climbs makes even the steepest gradients a breeze on a bike and definitely easier than most road bikes, even those with a compact gearing setup. And when it comes to speed and timing, is it as fast as a road bike? There's no real reason why the Crux would be any slower than something like a Giant Defy, for example. It's certainly not heavy, far from it. In fact, probably lighter than many endurance road bikes. Plenty of stiffness from the frame and fork the geometry works on the road. The only thing that would hold it back is a lack of aero and always exposed cables. But in my experience and my testing, it's definitely not slow at all. It's no slouch with these fat tires on at all. And if I had to have this as my only road bike, I wouldn't be unhappy at all. So I built the frame up myself with a SRAM Force Access Explore group set with the 1044 cassette on the back and a single chainring on the front. And that has been faultless. I really enjoyed the wide range of gears for off-road riding and for road riding as well. I'm still on the original pads and the original chain as well. So maintenance has been uh, very low indeed. And then the rest of the bike has changed over time. I put suspension stems on, suspension seat post. I even put a suspension fork on it as well and it handled everything just fine. And in fact, kept asking for more and more. So capable is the bike. But there are a few shortcomings, a few personal gripes. The biggest one perhaps as it's winter now, and I've been using it as a road bike with slick tires, is a lack of mud guard or fender mounts. So no way to fit mud guards, which is really annoying when you have so much tire clearance as well. I know it's not a bike designed to be that versatile. They have a Diverge for that and a Roubaix as well, but some mudguard mounts would have been absolutely killer on this bike. The other annoying thing about the bike for two reasons is the rear mech hanger. Firstly, it's made of a fairly mature cheese, I would say, but not the most robust in the world. This is the second one because the first one got bent when the bike fell over. 
So that is a bit of an issue. It's not the most robust mech hanger. I don't know whether it's any different to any other ones or whether I just use the bike more and it's had more abuse, but the mech hanger is a bit fragile. And then the other dilemma with buying this bike is when it was launched back in 2021, SRAM hadn't brought out their T-type transmission. That's where they do away with the derailleur hanger and the rear mechanism bolts directly to the frame and the through axle and it's much more robust and much stronger as well. And we are now starting to see some of the latest gravel bikes embracing that new dropout standard. There's a 3T I had the other day, the Santa Cruz Stigmata, the Ventum, GS1 and a few others as well. But this bike was designed before that standard was around so it sadly isn't compatible. So that's a, a small dilemma going forward when that group set becomes more popular and it would solve the bendy mech hanger straight away, but that does date the bike a little bit. But that said, it all works just fine when it's straight and true, no issues at all, but a bit of a, that's a bit of a dilemma in the back of my mind that I bought a bike that can't take the latest SRAM group set. But that may not be an issue for you, but it is an issue for me but I can, uh, I can live with it, I think, so um, that's okay. But those gripes aside, there isn't anything else to complain about the bike, really. And even the way it looks, the paint job, I think is fantastic on the bike. But I am tempted with a respray in the future for something a bit more, um, a bit more personal, something in mind. So stay tuned for that uh, when I get around to it. So hopefully I've explained why I like the Crux so much and why I bought it with my own money and why I've been such a good bike this year. I think in a, in a world of increasing choice, which is both fantastic, the road, endurance, all road, gravel, gravel race, bike packing, adventure, and then the mountain bikes over there as well, it can be difficult to choose the right bike to suit you. And against that backdrop of increasing choice, the crux with simplicity and focus on low weight and versatility where it matters and the way it rides so nicely as a road, gravel or cross bike really marks it out as something very special indeed, which is why I think it's a bike I'll never let go of. It really is that good. But anyway, I've waffled on for ages now, so I'll let you go. But before you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down there. And if you wanna see a video roundup of the best gravel bikes currently available, and watch this video right up here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.